So here's something a little different. Uh, I finally got tired of cleaning. Uh, I'm not done cleaning, but I finally got tired of cleaning. So I wanted to do a little project. Uh, and I don't remember if I did a video on it or not, but late, late last summer, early last fall, I don't remember the month, um, I bought an international disc, uh, 21 feet wide, uh, at, an, at an auction. Uh, originally intended to uh, take it to some family members and it ended up being a little too wide for their purposes. So that means I need to sell it because I have no way to pull a 21 foot disc. Um, had it on Craigslist advertised and a guy came and looked at it, really wanted it. But unfortunately this gang right here uh, has seized up. Now I've only had it a couple months and it was pretty stiff when I got it, but now it is completely seized up and I cannot get it um, off. I don't know the, the number of this disc. I think it is a, an international 480 uh, based on the parts diagrams and how the gangs are held on with these uh, supports right here. Uh, I originally thought it was like a 475 or a 485, which I don't believe that is the case anymore because they don't have these supports that go all the way around. Um, so what I need to do is, uh, and what I did last night, because I realized uh, I wanted to get a video of me taking the gang off of the, um, the disc. Unfortunately, I realized that we were supposed to get, um, let me walk over to the door. You can see the kind of weather we're getting. You can see that nice and uh, not necessarily snowing really hard, but it's snowing outside and I didn't want to be outside in, in that trying to do work in this. So last night when I got home, and this was well after dark, I thought I could just drop the gangs out of the bottom. And so I went through and naturally I was doing it this dark. I would have, if I hadn't been doing the dark, I would have known. Um, I thought I could just undo these and it would drop out. Well, you can see that there's actually, it actually holds itself in there. Um, so I actually have to remove the gang supports. So this, this top part right here, remove the gang supports from the disc itself, which not necessarily a big deal. That took me, um, once I got it figured out, it probably took me about 20 minutes. And like I said, it was in the dark, not really conducive to a video. I did try to save most of the hardware, some of the hardware is still on the disc, but these are the bolts um, that came out. Like I said, overall, they actually came out pretty good. So I went ahead and went, when I went to the farm store this morning, I went ahead and got new ones. So we have new holding hardware and everything. And I also picked up some fluid film, rusting corrosion check, Per corrosion protection, penetrant, and lubricant. We're gonna try it out. That's the $11 a bottle stuff. Um, so we're gonna try that out because I cannot get this nut off right here. That is an inch and five eighths, I believe, uh, nut in terms of uh, sockets, which I believe it is a, um, that's either one inch or one and eighth inch, uh, bolt or nut or shaft whatever you want to call it in there there is a fold over lock that i've already um normally this lock would have been folded over this way that is uh, i i've unfolded it and so but i really need to get this nut off i've already gone through uh last night i did not have the camera with me but i went ahead and uh put it through a couple heat cycles got some pv blaster on it and it's still not moving so that led me to my purchases for today, which are over here. Went to the farm store this morning and got me a 24 inch pipe wrench. Of all the pipe wrenches I have, I do not, I do not have any one big enough for um, the disc. And I also got me a four foot cheater bar uh, for my uh, three quarter drive socket. I almost bought a, um, I almost bought a uh, 40 inch long break, three quarter uh, drive breaker bar. Decided against that, um, you know, six of one, half dozen the other. Uh, I could not find, you know, I wanna do this this weekend, that way I can get back to working on the shop, but uh, we're gonna see if we can get it apart. 
because when we get it apart, what I want to do is I want to take these uh, hubs apart, get the bearings out, and uh, see if I can source some bearings. If not, um, at least I don't think I don't think these hubs. I cannot find these hubs in any part book uh, for international, um, but I do want to see if uh, there's something. Some way to rebuild these, if not, just get some bearing replacement, see if I can find a suitable replacement. This looks like it is a square shaft that runs through there, not a round shaft. So I'll have to go ahead and uh, see what kind of shaft it is, or I'd have the bearings. I'd have gone ahead and ordered the bearings and stuff, but we really need to get those hubs apart uh, after I take the disc apart, and we will go from there. So uh, let me get to see if we can get this nut off the end here. And uh, if not, you know, we'll keep trying at it. I really don't want to uh grind it off per se because i would assume that that shaft i've never rebuilt a disc before but i would uh, or i have not built a have not rebuilt a disc like this before um and so i would assume that shaft goes all the way through it but uh, let me get the camera set up and we'll we'll do we'll work on it some more all right i'm gonna try real quick to see if I can get it off with the impact one more time. I guess I bought a $30 pipe and a $40 pipe wrench for nothing. But you know what? I'll take it. If that's what it, uh, if it had to be scared by itself. Um, I didn't think the impact was ever going to get it off. I fully expected to have to use the, basically what I was going to do is going to take the, the pipe wrench and put the pipe wrench over here and then use the, use my three quarter drive ratchet and then put that uh, cheater bar on the ratchet and then it should have worked just fine. But um, I'm not gonna complain about being able to take it off with the uh, impact. So that's exciting. Make sure you can actually see all that. I did not intend for that to work or I did not think it would work. Um, so I think I will have to source a new nut here. Although that one looks okay, it's just got some wear on it. Let's see here. We'll definitely need a new fold over lock. We have our little hub here. We have our disc. Now one of the things that I'm going to try to do and I got this just from one I've, I've done this kind of before but also uh, I've watched, I watched a couple videos watching folks replace these and everything probably needs to stay in the same order and direction that it's in. So I will definitely try to do that. All right, so this, now I should be able to, <laughs> I do have to do one more thing. I've got to take the bolts off of these, the scraper bar right there. Um, so that is something that I have to do. And uh, so let me find all of the, Hardware to do that to get those scraper bolts off of there. All right, we'll take the scraper bar off. That should be relatively simple. It's just a carriage bolt, so not anything too big there. <coughs> Although we do need something. To support the disc itself.
not my day today. All right, try again. Probably one of the coolest things that I have purchased for this shop is that is this DeWalt right here. Um, well worth the money. All right, got my first support off, and uh, it's going to take a. If you look right here, it does have. It looks like a crack. It looks like it's been repaired before. So I'll have to grind that down and re-weld it. Doesn't look like it's gonna be too much of a challenge and then drill it again. So um, I wanna make sure I get these, keep these pointed in the right direction. All right, now let's see here if we can get this assembly off. Let's, uh, yeah, there's a part number on there. Let me get it cleaned up and then I'll take it over to the table and we can, we can look at it. All right, got the bearing cleaned up just a bit. Uh, this part number appears to be 469816 something R or B or 82. Um, and I did a quick look and I cannot find anything related to that right there. Um, there's also no snap ring to hold in either side of the bearing. Or either bearing, I guess there might be two bearings, and I'm wondering if this is a central part of the bearing or not. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, uh, aftermarket, there are, um, so these holes are five inches apart, and I think what I'm going to do is I can get a uh, sealed bearing uh, assembly that has five inch holes on it, which I believe will work for my purpose. The problem we're going to run into is the, the width from, from one side to the next. I don't think those bearings are the same width, so we'll have to come up with something to do uh, with that extra width in there. I'm not sure how to deal with that yet. I'll, I'll have to figure that out. But I, what I think I'm going to do in the meantime, since this assembly right here does not work as it sits, I'm going to see if I can press this bearing out. Um, after I get I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the rest of the gang and then once I have all three to see if the other the other bearing assembly hubs I guess you could call them that I'm going to see if they have a better part number on them where I can read those last two numbers and I can do a little bit better search on the parts so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of the uh, disc or the gang off or a part and then we'll uh, we'll go from there So as I mentioned, we need to keep all of this in the same order. So what I'm going to do
getting too old for this. So now, what I can do is, now that I've got it all assembled, I will uh, go ahead and see if I can get a better part number off those other bearing assemblies. And if not, we'll try to press it out and go from there. All right, well, here's some disappointing news. <clears throat> I figured I would uh, put the, I didn't even get a video of it because I didn't think it was, uh, I just wanted to test and see if it would even move or anything. Uh, so I put this bearing in the press like this and um, I put about, I don't know, well, it, w it wasn't even registering on the pressure gauge for the press. Um, sorry about that, I hit the camera. Um, and literally, I just saw a crack form, and then when I took it out of the press, it just kind of fell apart. Um, like, I would say there was less than 2,000 pounds of pressure on it. Um, but this bearing is, this sim assembly is not serviceable. Uh, so what they did uh, to put these in there is it's a cast part. You have uh, two bearings. And those bearings are held into this cast part by these snap rings. These are internal snap rings and there's no way to get it out because the, the grooves have been machined into the housing itself. So this was never meant to be a serviceable, other than grease, it was never meant to be a serviceable assembly. So basically those two assemblies are junk um, because they don't turn or anything. There's just nothing we can do with them. Um, which I mean, I, I'm glad that it that it busted at such a low pressure because I just wanted to see if we could move it, uh, and I was just pressing on the center uh, part right here. Like I said, not very much pressure because I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on it because it is cast, and anytime you're talking about cast stuff, um, it gets really you can get nerve wracking pretty quick for failures. Um, but yeah, so I mean, these aren't serviceable, so I have to find a bearing set or a bearing assembly that would fit a one and an eighth inch uh, rod, square square tube, uh, I guess arbor, uh, that goes through the disc. And I wanna say that these are 2.8, 2.9 inches wide. So I've gotta figure out what to do there. Um, it's not necessarily a huge deal overall because I can move the supports wherever I want. But the big, the big problem comes on the very end. Um, I've got to make sure I can take up all the slack with the, the nut on the end of the disc. So, um, yeah, so we're done with this for right now. I will go over and we'll kind of go through the parts, what we need. I'll see if I can find uh, the appropriate uh, replacement with the one and an eighth inch arbor and the, the five inch, um, the five inch, uh, distance between the holes and we'll go from there so so while I'm working on trying to find uh, bearing parts I think what I'm going to do is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get another um, engagement uh, stub shaft for the wing because we'll need that eventually and that one looks pretty worn out I'll go ahead and uh, go through all these make sure everything looks good there um, and hopefully my comment about the length makes sense because the way these spools are designed everything has a set length and ultimately in the end if the new bearings so say the current bearings are almost three inches wide if the new bearings are an inch and a half wide I'm losing basically uh, one and a half inches every time I put a bearing in. So ultimately in the end, I'm four and a half inches short. Well, there's not four and a half inches of thread on the end of this arbor right here. Not that, it, I mean, I've never rebuilt something like this with replacement parts like I'm trying to find. Um, so that's gonna be a little bit of a discovery effort for me. But we'll uh, see what I come up with. And maybe I'm making this too complicated. Um, but you don't know until you tried it. And like I said, this is, I would love to get this thing sold and out of here, but I don't think I'm gonna really wanna sell it with, well, I tried to sell it, but uh, with this gang seized, I uh, nobody wants it. So we'll go ahead and fix it. And then once it's nice and turning free again, we can get rid of it. So 
Um, I'm going to do some parts research, and in part two, hopefully come back and we've, uh, we've identified our parts and we're going to start reassembly.